Right, welcome to a new series on fixing up another bike that feels like it's been drug out the bottom of the ocean. This time around, no grand challenge involved. Um, this is a 1997 Honda Pan-European ST1100 that was owned by a work colleague who sold or gave or swapped it to another work colleague who was intending to fix it up, who didn't, who I had then swapped a different bike with for this. So now we've got it. Uh, what we know about it so far my friend colleague had to take the brakes off because it doesn't roll so the calipers are going to need refurbishing there's a whole bunch of bodywork missing there's an angle grinder cut or a split in the rear rack subframe so that's going to need sorting out and just generally the whole thing looks like it's been stored underwater i feel like it's a seaside bike because there's rust on all the joins in the frame not severe not structural but that will need treating and then painting over not to mention, the last time this thing had an MOT was 2013, so it hasn't run probably in 11 years, and it had a water leak, for which the radiator was replaced and stop leak was thrown in, which probably means it's a classic pan-European problem with the water pump. And since the cam belt's been sat still for probably 10 years, we're probably going to have to take that apart, replace the cam belt, and while we're at it, we'll give the engine a full once-over Figure out if there's anything wrong with it. It's on 56,000 miles, so it's young for a pan-European, but that totally depends how it was put away. That, and it's got half a tank of fuel that smells like Humbrol model varnish, so we're going to need to sort that out as well. So without further ado, I guess we should probably dive into it. Since this bike's so big, um, some of this is going to be handheld, and to save you the pain, I have already taken the airbox off. If you want to know what the airbox looked like, and why I didn't do this live on camera. Let's find somewhere to put that. Well, the screws, most of them don't have heads anymore. Um, and so that was a good 20 minutes with an impact driver. Now that we're in here, we've got usual pan-European things. So these are the carbs. We're going to have to go in with a screwdriver and release the boots. And we'll be able to lift these all up. But the first thing I want to look at is um, this. Evidently, some tea leafs tried to have a pop at this bike, and we do have two sets of keys for it, but neither of them, and not even my biggest screwdriver, can move that lock. So I thought, we've got a lock in a box um, that fits the key, so someone's obviously paid for that to be done or sourced that. Let's see if we can replace that ignition switch, um, and that sort of brings us into the right place anyway. So, on the pan, under here, you can see how scabby this is as I mentioned before none of this is deep rust but it's all going to need sorting out and treating and this thing is covered in aluminium corrosion as well um, under here there's a bracket missing which is in a box over there somewhere we've got the main electrical harnesses and lo and behold and I hate to see this this drives me absolutely crazy sodden chalky box these are a bad option for house wiring. They're an even worse option for motorbike wiring. And I have no idea. I know those are the two ignition wires. That one's the fan wire. As for what this jumper link here is, it goes to these other wires. Well, very fortunately, and thanks to one careful owner, we do have this wiring diagram. So we should be able to figure out what on earth the rest of it is in good time. But first of all, I want to put some power to it. Just want to see the dashboard light up, really. This one is an ABS model as well, so I want to see if the lights come on or flash. Um, we're not going to try and turn it over yet. I'm going to leave that for once I've, at the bare minimum, stuck some oil down the cylinders, but more likely stuck a boroscope down there. We might get to that in this video, we might not. But until then, yeah, I just want to see some lights, really. So... I'm going to go and grab a battery that I've got charged outside and plug it in. This thing does have a data tool alarm on it, so I found the alarm. I assume this is where the previous um, person was attempting. I don't know whether maybe a thief was trying to cut this off to get into the alarm. There's no damage here, though. I've stuffed a t-shirt in because the alarm is in that plastic back box there. Really commonplace for it. But that's hopefully just to save our hearing when we connect the battery up. The other thing is... The battery I've got, which is charging out there, has the wrong terminal layout. The very first thing I've ordered for this bike is a battery, but for the meantime, I'll grab the jumper cables off the wall up there. 
we'll hook it up, we'll get deafened, and we'll see if we can sort something out to do with that um, key fob as well. Okay, battery jumper cabled up to the positive, fully expecting we're about to get deafened, so let's make sure that's stuffed in there, and I heard a creak, but I didn't hear anything else. We got decent connectivity. There's a crackle coming from that alarm, but um, nothing more than that. So let's see if we can't hotwire this quickly. I expect we'll get deafened when we do this, and if we don't, we'll count our lucky stars. There's a beep. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, I'm guessing that is... Um... Oh, brilliant. It's got a motion sensor on it. Okay, I think... Um... We'll disconnect that. Kind of preempting this from past bikes that I've worked on. I've got the key here. We had this exact alarm on another bike. It takes CR2016s and they are absolutely trashed in this because of course they are. They've been in there for a decade. So, CR. 2016 is 3 volts, so this is going to want 6, so we'll go slightly under. Turn the power on the bench supply and we should have a working fob. I'll order some batteries for it so that we don't have to do this nonsense. Let's give this life again. Hey, there we go. That sounded suspiciously like it just rearmed. Round two. Oh, we've got a dashboard. I didn't see quite what went on there. The TCS active light, TCS error light, ABS light, they've gone out and come back on again. Well, at least the ECUs are alive. Got a neutral light. Can't remember what other lights the Pan European normally has. Is this one with a side stand light as well? Oh, yep, there it is, S. Not sports mode, but side stand. Getting far ahead of ourselves anyway. You only need traction control if you've got a running engine. So I suggest it's about time that we disconnect the battery so the alarm can't ruin the rest of our day and set about tearing apart this humongous motorbike. I think next thing is going to be get those carbs off. Welcome back to the Pan-European. That is uh, an hour of my life I'll never get back, and I'm not even all the way there yet. So, the this bike's probably been at the bottom of a river saga continues. And I don't mean that seriously, but the level of corrosion, if I drop you over here, this radiator was replaced before the bike was put off the road. And it's just disintegrating. You can probably tell by the pile of rust and junk under the bike how much fun I've had trying to get even the lower fairings off every single fixing and fastener this is one of the better ones is so rotten that even with the correct tools you know perfectly sharp allens and JIS screwdrivers you put something into it and it just crumbles into rust some of the um, JIS Phillips things up on the top fairing are so rusty they don't actually have holes in the top of them anymore, they're just full of fur. And you put any kind of implement in those and they just knock out. Except the base of the bolt, because they're pan-headed, is um, still really strong. So it's either drill them out or mess the fairings up. I've done this before on a, a pan-European who wasn't as rusty and um, that wasn't fun. This is... This is the best way I can think to torture yourself for an hour. Um, I'm starting to understand people that street fire bikes, but don't worry, that's not going to happen here. What I did want to do, though, is um, something much more fun than that for myself and for yourselves, is um, deploy the boroscope. Now, you'll have to excuse me, I don't have an SD card in this, and I can't be bothered to um, orchestrate that, so you're going to have to come on a second-hand video adventure with me down into the cylinders. So uh, one thing I have already noticed 
is there is plenty of oil kicking around down here. I'm hoping it is, um, let me straighten this up. I'm hoping it is a cam cover gasket. Although <laughs> with the way this bike is, who knows? Um, so I'm just gonna go down into the cylinder and it doesn't look too bad down here. I've had the mirror on the boroscope quickly and the cylinder walls are, are shiny enough. They're a bit scuffed up, but nothing worse than you'd probably expect from a bike of this age. So if I can get down into the rear cylinder on this side, I realize you can't see anything right now. But yeah, same again. Looks like it's been running a bit rich, maybe. But everything's intact. Um, and then the other thing I've been doing is, um, since the radiator is basically mush, I will take it off, but I need to get these top fairings off. And I need to order some new high-speed steel drill bits to drill out the bolts that are missing and the screws that are missing their heads. So I've decided we'll take a look at the cam belt, the probably more difficult than it needs to be, but effective way by just taking off these two bolts here and going in this way. And so we're on the side annoyingly with the uh, belt keeper, so we won't see very much just yet. But from what I can see, the cam belt's actually in remarkably good condition. So from here we can see the ribs on one part there, and the edges are not frayed. It looks like it's all in place. It looks remarkably clean in here, given the rest of the bike. If we go down a bit further, we can see two bits of the cam belt and the tensioner spring on the left there. And that, I wouldn't say it's brand new, but it certainly looks really good. It's definitely been changed in the life of the bike. So I don't have too many qualms in potentially spinning this engine over. I need to pull the other two plugs on the other side out first, though. Um, and we'll just squirt some ATF down the bores, give it a spin, see what happens. Make sure it sounds all right, make sure it's not knocking, banging and all that sort of stuff. And then we'll know whether it's worth continuing on with this. Because right now, there's an awful lot of very rusty, horrible work here to be done if the engine is toast. We're going to have to pay some attention to all of these bits. Uh, none of them are terminal, but all of them are really frustrating. So I take my sharpest screwdriver. This is solid metal but it's going to need to be ground back, a bit of rust treatment and a bit of spray. Same with sort of all of this. There's nothing tragic or terminal. Um, I think this is one of the worst spots i found. So these bolt heads are absolutely nuked. But the metal, you probably can't see that actually. The metal is absolutely fine. So it's all surface rust, but it's happened around every single one of these welds. I haven't found anything yet where there's enough rust to actually make me worry for the frame. But there is a lot of work. I mean, apart from the radiator, I'd probably push through that, but I don't want coolant all over myself. The story is kind of the same everywhere else. If you look up here, these are probably going to want replacing because they're a little bit crusty for my taste. But coming around to the other side of the bike, it's actually slightly cleaner on this side. But um, just little bits, you know. I'm half tempted to take this thing completely to pieces, drop the engine out and get the frame sent off to be shot blasted and powder coated, but that's a full restoration. And oh, the Pan European will probably be a classic soon, but do I want a fully restored Pan European? Or do I get it on the road and running and sell it on someone for cheap once I've had some fun with it? Cover up this scabbing, you know. Grind it back, get it to clean metal, bit of zinc oxide primer, bit of black. Get it going again, have some fun with it and sell it on. Probably, but then uh, equally, before I can do anything like that, I'm either going to need to pick up some cheap wheels on eBay or get these probably powder coated. This is the thing, once you start putting money into it, you can't stop putting money into it. It's going to need a new front tyre because it goes flat. Who knows, um, of course, being the ABS version. It's going to need um, wheels with the right screw holes to put the reluctor, wing, bleh, reluctor rings on. So yeah, there's a, there's a big question here. I'm probably going to have to go away and do some maths. Certainly, 
it is not beyond saving for someone who wants to save it. I just need to figure out whether I'm the one who wants to save this particular pan-European. Shall we see if we can hear the engine spin? Maybe that'll help me make my mind up. Okay, quick update. I plugged the battery back in and the alarm decided it didn't want to respond to the fob and I got wound up with it. If you know your alarms, you'll know that's a Data Tour Series 3. I've popped it open and bypassed it. I'm not going to show you exactly how to do it here. Um, there are plenty of videos on the web. But this one, like a lot of them, the battery's gone and it's making it act completely wonky. I think it's completely reset and forgotten the fobs, so that's what's going on. But as a result, we should now get some more noises out of the bike when we hook the battery up. Um, going to have to be a bit careful though because I have the fuel line disconnected on this side and there's a chance that we'll get some uh, spray. <laughs> so we're just going to touch the negative terminal. I'm just turn that down here and see what happens. Ah, my, uh, my hot wire's given up. Bear with me. As you can see, taking full advantage of the previous owner's chock block situation. Got a bit of solder stuffed in it. Can't say we're not professional. Okay, we have dash lights. Oh, we have a starter relay. Apparently we do not have the battery power, however, to actually turn the engine. I entirely forgot I have a jump starter. Well, the star motor works. Ah, huh, look at that. We do have spark. Should we? Should we? Well, I've got the plugs back in. I think we shall. Just going to wait for this jump pack to decide that it wants to... There we go, and we'll see if it can turn over with the plugs in. So, we shall find something suitably flammable on the shelf to feed it. Let's see what happens. A singular backfire. Why mess with tradition? One last go and I think we'll stop torturing it. I lied. One more, one more go. I think we'll call that a start. Time to stop torturing the electrics. But it's good, the engine doesn't sound knocky. The oil pressure light went out. There was an unholy cloud of smoke. I think we can all agree that that's, um, at least for now, semi-successful.